You ready? <laughs> okay. Oh, again. All right, guys. Uh, index finger. Wing it. Wing it. Back to the index. Uh. Period. Period. Gigi. Yes, ma'am. The youngest player in the entire NBA. You just had your 19th birthday. Yes, Happy belated. Thank you, thank you. You came into the league as an 18 year old and you are literally the youngest person on the planet to be playing against the best basketball players in the world. Mm -hmm. Has that sunk in? Um, not really yet. No, no, actually I'm lying. When we played uh, Golden State, definitely sunk in. Cause I, I got to like touch Draymond and like touch Curry. It's a weird thing for a Hooper, but for me it was crazy, so. Okay. Let's fast forward to that game then, since you brought it up. Draymond, after that game, went on his podcast and said that at halftime, you like went out of your way. And I'm, these are his words, so you're going to have to walk me through it. Went out of your way to bring up to Steph that you're uninvited from his camp. Yeah. How did that happen? Like, not the actual camp thing. Like, how did the interaction with Steph happen? Uh, I saw he was doing like, mm, mm. Steph does like weird stuff, like, but the greatest shooters do weird stuff. So I saw him, like, I was at the half-court line, I called him over and he came. Is that halftime or before the game? No, nah, yeah, it's halftime. Okay. Um, and then uh, I told him, I was like, you know, it's crazy. Then I told him how I, I got uninvited from uh, the camp, but Draymond left out. How I, I told him after, I was like, it's fine, I had reclassed up. That's why they took the invite away. And then he was like, oh, word, 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 word. But now since Draymond put that video, I, I'm, I know I'm heavy on their Skyrim report now. Was that on your mind? Like throughout the first half, you're like, I have to tell Steph this, yeah. or was it like a moment of opportunity? It was like I said, I was either gonna get it before the game when it was walking towards our goal to like line up for the national anthem, or or halftime or after the game. What was Steph's reaction? At first, he was like, Oh man, I'm not on the voting committee. I just, you know, it just has my name on. He was like, I'm so sorry and stuff, but no, he was cool about it. Draymond also made it seem like you were upset about it, or you used it for a motivation because you did play really well that game. Did you, is there validity in, in using that as a motivation for that game specifically? Um, I guess you can say that. I feel like I always have a motive going into uh, every game. Uh, I feel all the way to 45, so just my jersey number is motivation for me every game, but I feel like that was a little added fuel, just a tad bit. What's the story behind the jersey number? 45, that's the pick I felt. So is that what motivates you? Definitely. Every morning you wake up. Every morning when I see that four or five, I'm like, I gotta go get after it. It's interesting you bring that up too. And I, I want to talk about that because you were the number one ranked player coming out of high school, right? And you dropped to 45. I've seen the interview with you on draft night. Like you're audibly kind of disappointed, which is fair, valid. But then I think the actual quote that you said is, I've got a lot to prove. Right. What have you proved to yourself this season so far? I feel like I've proven like no matter the age or no matter what pick you fall. I feel like Jokic proved like no matter what pick you fall, but you know that anyone belongs in this league. Uh, not just anyone, I'm sorry. The skilled players belong in this league. And that's not a knock on the rest of the uh, players or 44 players that went ahead of me. Uh, you know, I just feel like I got that dog in me. You know, I come from South Carolina where we kind of get overlooked, but thanks to guys like John Moran, and, Zion, you know, they kind of opened the door for us. Let's see, guys. You have South Carolina ties with John Morant. Right. Um, I know one of your cousins grew up with him. You knew his family since you were young. Has it been semi-nice to have a, a familiar face with, I mean, you're going from an 18-year-old to, like, living an NBA life now. Like, your life has changed. Yeah. Is it nice to have just someone that, like, you kind of know? Yeah, when I, uh, when I hear him talk and I hear his accent, I'm like, oh, I got a little bit of home left over here. But uh, it's, it's nice, I get to talk to his dad every now and then, but uh, they took me in like I was one of theirs, so it's all love for them. That must be nice just like as a transition. Right. To have like just someone who you kind of know. I kind of had that <laughs> when I came here too, because it was such a difference going from where I was from to a new city, a new job, and I had like just, I wasn't, I didn't know Dylan. Right. And he's gone now, but like it was a familiar face, just right. like made you kind of feel like home still. Facts, facts. Uh, all right, so we were talking about you being the youngest guy, and I watched an interview with you in South Carolina talking about your idol, or like your favorite NBA player, and at that time it was LeBron James. And when we played the Lakers, you were not with the Grizzlies, you were with the Hustle. Don't worry, there's two more games and you will be able to play him. 
And he's the oldest guy in the league, yeah. which is just this crazy, like, both sides of the spectrum. After everything that you've, we talked about, Steph and Draymond, um, is it still going to be cool when you get to play LeBron? Or is that, you think, going to be kind of like... Oh, definitely. Like, if he falls to the ground, you might see me trying to help him up. That's all <laughs> I'm going to say. It was crazy when the Rockets played the Lakers. I called Cam Whitmore right after the game, like, yo, like, what, what was it like, like, playing against Brown? Like, what was it like? And he was, like, still, like, so stoked about it and stuff, too. He was, like, I almost dunked on him, man. So I feel like, you know, that just shows our appreciation that, you know, that we have for him and what he's done for the game. Uh, he came to watch me play AAU during the Peach Jam. I saw Brian walking through the hallway, and naturally everybody's like too scared to go up there. Of course. I was like, man, yo, Brian. And he turned around and was like, oh, what up, G? I was like, no way. And then like, he dabbed me up. He was like, keep going, GG. And he said my full name. I was like, like, this is crazy. But that just shows like how much he knows about the game. Like he knows about kids that aren't even in the league just yet. So I feel like he's just preparing. So that was your first experience with LeBron? Yeah and now you're going to play against him. You talked to Cam, who you knew from Team USA. Mm -hmm. Did he give you any other insights, like any like expectations into, we play in March, we play them in April. You've got two chances to go against yeah. the guy that you look up to. What are the expectations? For one, I'm expecting the Grizzlies to come on top with the win, even though I am a huge LeBron fan. You know, uh, this is a business and we're trying to get paid as well. Uh, and other expectations, just uh, seeing what I can learn from him. You know, you hear the stories that uh, about like how he talks on the court or how he controls everything. So I feel like that'll be very, very cool to see. Like, you know, just him orchestrating everything. I feel like he has a very, very loud and vocal voice. So I'm definitely going to be able to hear him. Is there anything you've learned from your one interaction with him in terms of being a student of the game? In order to know a high school kid, you've right. got to be a student of the game. Right. LeBron is obviously someone who knows everything. He called you G the first right. time he met you in Crazy. AAU tournament. Is there anything you've learned from that? Yeah, just like how you said, um, just knowing and uh, I would say how to be a professional, like how he carries himself. Uh, it's not necessarily like, oh, I know I'm the, but like he carries himself as like he's a proud, strong man and uh, a businessman as well. And uh, preparation, he had a, a, a sack with him, like a little bag. And uh, I was wondering what was in there. During the game, like he looked at his watch, took some like some peanuts and fruit and stuff out of his yeah, bag and started eating. Yeah, it's time for his protein or yeah, his. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. Hmm. Uh, another guy who knew your name, who I don't want to put words into your mouth, so I'm gonna ask you about it. Who you might have been a little shocked that Golden State Warriors game was a TNT game. Yeah. You got interviewed after the game. The interview goes well, and then Shaq comes on. Yeah, and he was... says, GG, young man, I have no questions. I just want to let you know I'm proud of you. And your reaction went viral. Yeah. <laughs> Can you walk me through like that moment where you hear Shaq say your name, know who you are, acknowledge you? I got the, uh, when I heard Ernie's voice, I'm like, okay, okay stay cool, <laughs> stay cool. And then I heard um, um, her Chuck's voice and uh, I heard, uh, Lord, my, why, why is my mind foggy? What's her name? Candace Parker. Candace Parker. That almost, I almost had the reaction when I heard her voice. Cause for one, she's very, very beautiful and she's also a goat in her own category. But like the tip of the iceberg was definitely hearing it from the most dominant player of all time. So I just think back from like where I come from in back, uh, uh, where in life really. I was uh, raised in a trailer and uh, me talking to Shaquille O'Neal is just, you know, believe those things can add up, but they do. So now that you've let it sink in, it sounds like you've had time to reflect on it and, and from where you started to where you are now. Right. Has that part sunk in? I asked you if it sunk in that you're just young and playing in the NBA, but mm -hmm. what about all these greats that you looked up to your whole life knowing you? Uh, Steph knows you, Draymond knows you, Shaq knows you, LeBron knows you. Yeah, it's, it's been crazy. Uh, I don't know if it's sunken in yet. I kind of like enjoy the part that like when I see those guys, I kind of like, I don't want to say get butterflies in my stomach, but I'm like, like, dang, like that's such and such. So like before I've been, uh, I've gotten an opportunity to play anytime I was called up with the Grizz, like we play like the Mavs or like the Clippers, like soon as the buzzer goes off, like I'm like first one off the bench, I'm running to those guys. Like I'm letting them know like, hey, I'm Gigi, I'm the Rook. You don't know my name yet, but hopefully in the next year or two, I can make a name for myself. And I've said that to 
Chris Middleton, Brandon Ingram, Giannis, Kyrie, like a plethora of players. So hopefully they can know my name as well. What are their reactions? As someone like me or someone watching this podcast, we're never going to have the opportunity to do that. Right. You have that opportunity. Can you take me inside? Like, you don't have to be like specific on what they said, but like, mm. are they nice? Like, are they yeah, welcoming? I, are they like KGG little goofball? Yeah, I feel, I feel like it's like a, they trying to get off the course. It's like, okay, all right, all right. But the one person I would say who gave me like the most advice was, uh, it was either Markeith Morris and Julius Randle. They both took me like, like grabbed me on the side, just, you know, told me to stay in the gym, keep working. Like when the opportunity presents itself, like can't be us around, like you gotta go after it. And uh, that just stuck with me a lot. Just hearing it from those guys and you know, what they've been able to do in the league, hopefully I can do as well. You've named so many players and one player that I just want to follow up on was Jokic. Yeah. And I think you related to him because he, he was taken so late in the draft and he's the two time MVP, like yeah. the, one of the best players in the league right now. Is there is there players like him or other players in the league that you look at as guys who were taken later that have proved themselves in the league? Either they had long careers or they have all star careers, or you look at them and you're like, look, if I went here and they did this. What? we can be on similar paths. Jokic is obviously a notable one for basketball, but also in like other sports, uh, Tom Brady. What's Travis Kelsey's brother's name? Uh, Jason. Jason Kelsey was the 191st pick, just like bizarre things. Uh, Brock Purdy, guys that just, you know, were overlooked a lot of times. Like Mike Tyson, undersized, small, but one of the greatest pound for pound punches, punchers ever. So, uh, you know, if you have a motive and you have your why, if you got something that can drive you every day, like you waking up knowing what you want to do, I feel like anything's possible. Why do you think you were overlooked? Childish mistakes I made in college, on and off the court. I wasn't the best teammate. There was times where guys would go to the huddle, I would still be sitting on the bench because I was just so mad for some odd reason. But um, that's another thing I had to learn. Like you never know who's watching. And uh, at the time I was coming out of high school number one, so I had a lot of eyes on me and I just made careless mistakes. Looking back, like you sound so mature right now, looking back and owning mistakes. What lessons have you learned? Like how have you changed? Cause you are, you are just like a bright light on the Grizzlies now. Yes, man. Um, I learned to stay off the internet. <laughs> Definitely. I think we could all learn that. Facts. Be aware of your surroundings and uh, stay true to yourself, but learn to adapt to situations. And I say that because at every level, if like, say like, if your dad isn't your coach at every level, you're gonna have a different coach. So you have to adapt to different systems. Now it's the NBA, who knows what can happen in like the next six years. Like if I go to a different team, gotta adapt to their organization and all that. Hopefully I wanna stay in Memphis for sure. So, but I've, I've had to learn to, you know, adapt to different things. What's one thing that you're proud of yourself for? not giving up. When training camp started, and even before that, when we was having open runs in the summer, literally every day I was going back home crying. Like, it was so bad. I was, I've never felt like I was bad at basketball before, other than when I first joined CP3, and then when I got here, I was like, the gap between me and these dudes is like crazy, but I stuck with it. I had to grind it out. I had to understand that, that yeah, you're young, but like you're here for a reason. And that just kept pushing me. Uh, like I've never shot the ball as well as I'm shooting it right now. And it isn't Alex Carter, it's Anthony Carter. I got that wrong as well on TNT, that's my bad. But he's been by my you side. You call him AC, right? Yeah, AC, yeah. yeah. He's been by my side the whole way, getting my shot right. And uh, from the film, it looks like I belong out there. Not from the film. You are making an impact on an NBA team. Injuries aside, you went from time at the hustle, mm -hmm. and you have been quoted as taking that seriously. A lot of a lot of guys, and not in our organization, but go to the G League, and they don't use it as an opportunity to get better. Right. A lot of our guys do that. You went and use it, and now you're making like a big impact, like on an NBA team winning games. When you have time to reflect the beginning of this season, going home and crying after practices, mm -hmm. to now 
being interviewed on TNT, making impacts, getting 15, 20 points a game. Like, how does that feel? I will never feel that feeling. Well, all I can say is uh, it comes from a higher being and that is being God. Um, you know, the Bible says that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. And he's allowed me to do some very, very spectacular things. And, you know, you know, obviously thanks to the coaches and, you know, the GMs for giving me the opportunity. But, you know, I thank God every chance I get, you know, just for allowing me to be able to wake up every day knowing that my job is just to put a ball in the hoop, which is crazy. And your dad's a pastor, right? Like still preaching every Sunday. We Did go to church on Saturdays. I'm sorry. We sorry. keep it sad, but no, you're fine. Saturdays. Every weekend. Right. When you're going through that tough time at the beginning of the season, how do you get through it? And how does your dad help you? Because I know he's a big part of your life. Uh, my dad has the best quotes ever. I'll tell you that. He can put words together. My mom as well, she can put words together to make it sound so good and make you feel good. Uh, the latest one my dad gave to me, um, he said, a prepared, a prepared person uh, a prepared person can never be a scared person. It was some. It was some along those lines, but it was basically like just telling me how, like I gotta like always be prepared before the games. Like waking up on game day, and making sure I'm, you know, doing my things that I'm supposed to do right. A prepared person can never be a scared person, which I get. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here prepping for our interview right now, and right. once you feel prepared, your nerves kind of right. settle down. How do you prepare for games? Um. I gotta have tropical smoothie for some reason. What's your order? Uh, turkey bacon ranch, no ranch, chipotle mayonnaise, no tomatoes, extra bacon, Bahama mama, no white chocolate, no coconut, extra strawberry with a hint of acai. Oh, this man has done this before. Oh, definitely. He's at 82 times. <laughs> with the salt and vinegar chips and the snickerdoodle cookie. Oh, wow. No. And then I eat that. I come over to the facility. I try to get in the hot tub for about like two or three minutes. And I stand in the cold tub just to like like really wake up and then I'm ready to go. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about just one of your teammates. Right. Because in the pre-draft time, uh, I watched an interview and you said that you had come to Memphis for one individual workout. Because um, you work out with like a whole bunch of teams before mm -hmm. you before the draft happens. And you had said that you met one of the players. And you said the one interaction you had was that you shook Desmond Bain's hand. Yeah. Des this season, in or out of, like injured or not injured, has been praised for his leadership. Right. How has your relationship with him, from shaking his hand as an 18 year old kid who may or may not be with the Grizzlies ever, to him now and his leadership style, how has your relationship grown with him? Um, I feel like he sees me as a, not yet fully a man, but a growing man. Um, and he treats me as such, uh, have nothing but love for me. It's crazy, like he'll see, like if, he, like if I don't have a smile on my face, he thinks something's wrong with me. So like he'll come over like, like what you see out there? Like what you think's going on? And if I don't say nothing, like he'll say something for me. He'll be like, like the low man is pulling in a little bit. So you know, you got to shake up out the corner. If he's over there, you got to dive down, cut through. Like he knows so much about the game as well. And um, I like no weird stuff. I like to watch him like work out. He doesn't think I do, but like if I'm in the weight room, I like, take a peek like every rep he's going hard like super hard super hard even with his uh, his ankle injury he's attacking rehab very very hard very very serious like you can tell he wants to be back out there on the floor with us he's a, a great family man as well has a beautiful family and uh those are things that you know i try to look up to you know hopefully you know one day and i can have a family of my own maybe i cut my hair get some waves like him okay a little bit. <laughs> Uh, that Jordan documentary, it just reminded me of when you said like looking at him working out, that Jordan documentary came out during the pandemic and so many of Jordan's teammates, Kobe's teammates talk about how they watch them from afar and they see that they just go so much harder than everyone else and like it, to have a vet like that as a rookie brings you into the league with a certain standard. Right. What is something that you were most surprised about, about the NBA? I would say like how practices are conducted. That was uh, 
you know, I'm thinking we're going to be in here for like hours, like suicides, running this stuff. Like you see the last dance, they got like Mike and them like doing suicides and stuff. But uh, it's really like a lot of it is on your own as a player to like know your matchups and different things like that. But, uh, you know, the coaches, I will say the coaches know exactly what they're talking about. And it's just on you to go out and execute. So you're surprised that it's more on you. Right. It was different in college. Yeah, because, you know, high school, middle school, college, you know, coaches like, okay, now you're going to walk over here, da 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 da. No, nah, they're going to just tell you to play. Hey, you come up here, screen that way down. And it's on you to be a basketball player. And that's another thing that was like new, like everyone was on the same page. You know, college, you got guys goofing off on the sidelines and all that stuff like that. But when, like, here, when it's time to lock in, like, it's a different level of focus. There is some goofing around on the sidelines. And I'll yeah, say, for sure. during games, like, that's one of the most fun parts is to see, like, the bench's reaction. And you even said, like, if you don't have a smile on your face, does know something's wrong. Yeah. You always have a smile on your face. You always do. You have, like, a fun smile. Vince <laughs> has, like, a devious smile. Right. <laughs> what makes you smile? Game days, you're in the game. You're playing, you're on the bench, whatever it is. Like, what keeps you so happy? Just the fact that I'm there. Like, every arena we go into, even, like, I've been in the FedEx Forum, like, a lot now. But each time I go out, I just, like, glaze at the, the crowd if I'm out there. Like, dang, like, I'm really here. This is like, real life. It's real life. It's crazy. And, uh, yeah, that's one of the main reasons why I keep a smile. If a 15-year-old kid who had the same situation as you came to you right now and was like, what advice would you have wanted at 15? What would you say? Your work ethic has to be different. And I'll tell them, like, I know you hear it from uh, your high school coach, your AAU coach, oh, that you gotta work, that you gotta work. But nah, seriously, like, you have to get in the gym. You have to, like, if you're at that stage, I feel like you always gotta have a basketball somewhere near you. Do you have a basketball near you at all times? Yeah, I got one in the crib. Like when I'm you just like sit bed, watching TV holding a basketball. Like I like just throw it up in the air a couple of times. It's got to be like your life. Yeah, you got to eat, sleep, and breathe it. Yeah. My last question to you is because you mentioned all these greats that know who Gigi Jackson is. You feel like you've been semi overlooked up until now. Now you're playing big NBA minutes. You're playing alongside players like John Des who thousands of kids would look up to, right? Like, now that Gigi Jackson is a name in this league, Shaq knows it, LeBron knows it, what does Gigi Jackson aspire to be? Um, I want to be that guy that the kids look up to, that, you know, reclassed up early, young guy stepping into a world where shouldn't really be at just yet. But if you stay in the gym, know what you're doing, preparation you got the right people in your circle anything's possible and i want to be that guy that they look up to all right easy as that Gigi yes, jackson ma'am. thank you thank you thank you thank you for your time no, thank you grizzlies fans make sure that you are subscribed to our memphis grizzlies youtube channel for more of these podcasts and other behind the scenes footage